Hello and good evening. Alumni, students, faculty, staff, family, friends, all in the room. Welcome to the University School of Public Health. Thank you all so much for joining us for this very special evening to recognize alumni who continue to address the grand challenges of public health while also inspiring, leading, and elevating our SPH alumni body. I would also like to give a special welcome and shout out to our new dean, Dean Pettigrew. <laughs> My name is Darren Kaltfit. I'm Associate Director of the Career Professional Development Center for the School of Public Health. I've been in this role for over 21 years of career quality practitioner work, and I love utilizing my strengths as a maximizer. I also do a lot of metaphorical humor work, too. And I was going to mention, I have a lot of jokes about unemployment, but they never work. Anyway, that's, 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 yeah, that's, I love it. Thanks, Gail. <laughs> anyway, I love working with students and alumni. Many of the ones I've worked with are in this room to make their career dreams become reality. In addition, having the opportunity to engage with alumni like Liesl is one of my favorite parts of the job. Tonight, I have the honor to co-host our reception and alumni society board awards with past president, Hall of Fame rock star, Liesl Hargens. Liesl. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. We've known each other a very long time. It's nice to be up here with you. Um, I'm Lisa Hargens. I'm the past president of the School of Public Health Alumni Board. Um, I'm also a proud 2007 graduate from the EPI program. I also, in my day job, I'm the vice president and lead the health economics and outcomes research function at Boston Scientific. I'm so happy to be here tonight to co-host this special event to celebrate my peers and their accomplishments. For more than 78 years, the University of Minnesota School of Public Health has prepared some of the most influential leaders in the field and transformed the way public health is practiced around the globe. Our programs and research have evolved to meet current public health needs, but our focus and determination to protect and promote the health of all populations has not wavered since the school was founded in 1944. With a community of over 12,000 living alumni, a faculty team of nearly 130 and over 1,000 enrolled students, we continue to see our incredibly talented School of Public Health community lead the public health field. There is so much for us to be proud of at SPH, but truly our alumni are always the highlight of our pride, making tonight incredibly special. At this time, if you are an SPH board member or committee member here tonight, please stand to be recognized. Since 1982, the SPH Alumni Society Board has represented the alumni body and continuously worked to build an alumni-centered culture within the SPH community by fostering connections among alumni, faculty, and students. Thank you for your alumni leadership, your support, and commitment to SPH. Your work and talent is valued, appreciated, and admired. Lisa. I'd also like to add a special thank you to our School of Public Health Alumni Society Board Engagement Committee Chair, Debbie Trahan. Thank you for your leadership. Um, and support to help bring this event and other alumni events to life. We are very grateful for your leadership on the engagement committee. Additionally, I'd also like to thank Assistant Director Bao Li Yang, School of Public Health Events Manager Sarah Harris, and Associate Chief Advancement Officer Kablia Tao for pulling everything together, the strategy, the, the, the logistics, and the details of this special night. Woo. 
For more than six years, I've served on our 22 member School of Public Health Alumni Society Board, and it's been a really incredible experience to have the opportunity to engage the School of Public Health Alumni in a variety of ways, as well as stay connected to the school and most importantly, give back to our community. It is wonderful to meet some of you in person for the first time. Um, if you're an alum and curious about joining the School of Public Health Alumni Society Board or one of our other committees, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, one of our board members here this evening, or the advancement team. That being said, let's get this show started. Tonight, we will celebrate and recognize six alumni who have exemplified the School of Public Health values and have been selected by a committee of their peers as outstanding School of Public Health alumni. The alumni awards being handed out tonight include the prestigious Gaylord Anderson Leadership Award, the Alumni Innovator Award, the Emerging Leader Award, the Alumni Award of Merit, and the Outstanding Mentor Award. We will start this evening with the Gaylord Anderson Leadership Award. The Gaylord W. Anderson Leadership Award honors graduate of the School of Public Health who embodies Anderson's qualities as an established visionary leader, teacher, collaborator, and public health ambassador, and who possesses an abundance of intellectual curiosity, critical thinking, and the ability to inspire others. It is our great privilege to honor Dr. Keeley Ness with the Gaylord Anderson Leadership Award. Dr. Ness received her BA in physical therapy from the College of St. Scholastic in 1983 and her MPH and PhD in epidemiology from the University of Minnesota in 2002 and 2004, respectively. She joined the faculty at the Department of Epidemiology and Cancer Control at St. Jude Children's Hospital in 2006 and was promoted to associate member in 2010 and to full member in 2015. She's a physical therapist and clinical epidemiologist. Her research is focused on recognizing, describing, and remediating fun functional limitations in childhood cancer survivors. This includes determining the extent to which disease and or treatments have left childhood cancer survivors with organ system deficits that immediately or eventually interfere with their abilities to participate in normal movement and thus restrict participation in school, work, leisure time, physical activity, and sport. She uses epidemiologic, clinical, and laboratory approaches to evaluate and describe physical performance, fitness, and phys physiologic reserve. Her work is used her work using epidemi epidemiologic and clinical investigations has documented specific physical limitations and fitness deficits experienced by children during cancer therapy and by childhood cancer survivors, identifying those most at risk for developing limitations and tested interventions designed to prevent physical disability or restore physical health. At St. Jude, she is the PI of the Human Performance Laboratory, the co-chair of the Cancer Prevention and Control Program, the faculty representative to the Federal Demonstration Partnership, and a member of the Clinical Trial Scientific Review Committee, the CTSRC, the CTSRC Behavioral and Psychosocial Subcommittees, and the Biostatistics Advisory Committee. A lot of accomplishments. She teaches the Introduction to and the Advanced Epidemiolog Epidemiology courses for the Master of Clinical Investigation program at St. Jude. Dr. Ness, please join us on stage to accept your award. So first of all, I'd like to thank Monica for nominating me, who I met at Stanford just a while ago. And we were intrigued by both being alumni. So um, I'd also like to thank the faculty of the School of Public Health providing, for providing me with the tools for su a successful career as an epidemiologist and for my ability to evaluate outcomes following childhood cancer therapy. So I learned this the first day of my tenure as a student at the School of Public Health when John Finnegan said, there's a difference between an epidemiologist and a physician, and here's what it is. When you walk upstream, when, you, when an epidemiologist and a physician are walking upstream and they see somebody drowning in the river, the physician dives in and saves them. 
and the epidemiologist runs up the path to see who's throwing them in. So as a clinician, you know, I, I, I was saving people, but as an epidemiologist, I can figure out why people um, are falling in the river. So I think that was important for my thinking and for my research career. I also learned from Dr. Osterholm that you shouldn't eat at a buffet and that, <laughs> and that a virus is going to kill us all. So I'm particularly grateful to my Minnesota mentors, Les Robeson, Ann Mertens, Joe Neglia, and the late Julie Ross for giving me unparalleled opportunities to engage in clinical research. I'm indebted to my husband, Al, and my daughter, Rachel, for their continuous support because I was older than 40, so I would have been dead um, <laughs> for their, when I went to public health school, and encouragement, and to my late parents, both graduates of the University of Minnesota, for instilling in me the love of science. I want to extend my gratitude also to the patients and the families who've participated in my cohort studies and my clinical trials for providing the foundational knowledge for current cancer protocols designed to minimize toxicity while preserving survival outcomes. Thank you very much, and I'm humbled to receive this award. Thank you, Dr. Ness. Our next award is the Alumni Innovator Award. The, um, the Alumni Innovator Award is bestowed on a graduate of the University of Minnesota School of Public Health who has made, developed, or implemented innovative ideas, approaches, or solutions to public health services through science, practice, or education, while displaying qualities of persistence in pursuing his or her career. The recipient of this award goes to Sean McElligot. Sean is a section head in the Division of Engineering and the Division's Quality Manager. He has second line managerial responsibility for the Applied Computational Engineering Unit, the Biomechanical Development Unit, and the bi Biomechanical Shop. He is the director of the Mayo Clinic Division of Engineering Additive Manufacturing Facility and oversees the Division of Engineering Microfabrication Facility. Sean has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Stanford University and a Master's of Healthcare Administration from the University of Minnesota. Prior to joining the Mayo Division of Engineering in 2003, Sean was a program manager at Bard Access Systems in Salt Lake City, Utah, while managing product development of implanted ports, which are primarily used for de delivery of chemotherapeutic agents. He started with Bard as a biochemical engineer in 1996. From 1990 to 1996, Sean was a member of the technical staff with Abbott Laboratories in Mountain View, California. He contributed to the mechanical design of a pulmonary artery uh, catheter capable of continuous measurement of cardiac output. From 1984 to 1990, Sean was a mechanical design engineer at several small companies developing consumer electronics in Silicon Valley, California. Sean and his wife, Julie, have two adult children. Sean enjoys baking and eating desserts, brewing and drinking beer, and cooking and eating ethnic food. He also enjoys traveling, rock climbing, mountain biking, biking gravel biking, which I'm not quite sure it is, but it sounds fun, and skiing. Sean, please join us on stage to accept your award. Thank you. The, your uh, introduction sounds impressive when you put it like that, but uh, it, it, from the inside it feels like a, an accumulation of incremental achievements. So uh, I'd like to thank the School of Public Health and the uh, uh, Alumni Society for, for the award. I'd like to thank the, uh, the selection committee for selecting me. I'd like to thank Steve Dyke, my, uh, my uh, classmate and colleague, for nominating me, and, and Mark Weed, my boss, for helping Steve write the, uh, the nomination. Um, I'd like to uh, thank my wife, who, who supported what at the time was really just an expensive hobby, uh, and my children, who, who 
I, I were, you know, put up with my, my studies. I, I still remember my younger son, uh, Jack, who is here, um, looking up at me when I had overloaded myself with courses, looking up at me as an eight-year-old and saying, Dad, you made a mistake. <laughs> but uh, so the, the, you know, as I said, I, I, I got a Master's of Healthcare Administration from University of Minnesota here. And as I said, it, it started out as an expensive hobby. I didn't have a real purpose in pursuing the degree other than wanting some more education and figuring that working in a hospital, having an understanding of how hospitals work would be better than some random business administration degree. Um, it wound up being a check mark for a promotion. The job that I was promoted in required a master's degree, so that helped with that. Um, it really did help learning how hospitals uh, and health care work. You know, that uh, you know, understanding how our customers engineering, we serve the rest of the clinic. So understanding how our customers work and what their challenges and constraints are. So learning finance and accounting and third party payer system and, and leadership and teamwork were all you know, central to my development. Um, but my number one takeaway was, uh, I think it was in the problem solving course, maybe, I learned about the SBAR. And that has been, uh, it's been a cornerstone of my career. Um, so SBAR, it's used for uh, handoffs in the hospital, but it's also an effective way of communicating really any idea or of any recommendation for how things should go. So it's situation, background, assessment, and recommendation. And so what, you know, what I've taken away is that if you can make a great case for your objective, that's really the key to success. So that was, I, if I, I think that the, uh, the, the SBAR was worth my entire um, several years of, of, uh, of coursework years. But thank you very much for the honor of this, uh, um, this award. It's, it's really, truly a, a wonderful thing. I'm, I'm truly honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And now the Emerging Leader Award. The Emerging Leader Award is presented to an alum, alum who has made a significant impact on his or her profession or community at large within 10 years of graduating from the School of Public Health. The Emerging Leader is a well-rounded and highly engaged professional who possesses integrity, credibility, and, and competence. Dr. Debashri Ray was, is the recipient of the Emerging Leader Award. Dr. Ray is an assistant professor of epidemiology at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore. She is a biostatistician and, gen and a genetic epidemiologist. Her research primarily focuses on developing novel statistical method methods and open access tools for analyzing large scale data to study genetic basis of common human diseases. She works on genetic epidemiology studies of both chronic adult diseases and child health outcomes. She is, a commit, she is committed to better understand the genetic of clefts, one of the most common craniofacial birth defects in humans. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Ray led and collaborated on timely research and scientific communication on COVID-19 in guiding government policy in response to the public health crisis in India. Apart from her multidisciplinary research contributions spanning statistics, epidemiology, and human genetic fields, Dr. Ray has made significant contributions in teaching and mentoring students in these fields and in further service missions of various public health societies. Unfortunately, Dr. Ray could not be here tonight, so we will accept this award on her behalf. So I am going to hand it off to Darren. <laughs> Thank you, Liesl. Our next award is the Alumni Award of Merit. The Alumni Award of Merit recognizes graduates of the School of Public Health who have achieved professional excellence in the field of public health through numerous years of consistence, performance, and service, distinguished themselves in their particular profession or field of endeavor, and contributed substantially to the health and well-being of people, communities, and societies. The recipient of this award is Dr. Ryan Newkirk. Yeah. 
Maybe that's Dr. Ryan. That's... <laughs> Dr. Newkirk has worked in public health and emergency response for more than 20 years, with a focus on food safety and food defense for the past 15 years. He completed his doctorate in epidemiology at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. After completing his doctorate, Dr. Newkirk then joined the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, in 2013 as a policy analyst with the Food Defense and Emergency Coordination Staff Office of Analytics and Outreach, Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. In 2016, Dr. Newkirk became senior advisor to the same staff. During his time with FDA, Dr. Newkirk has worked on a number of agency efforts, many involving multidisciplinary groups, intra-agency projects, interdepartmental federal policy, international activities, and public stakeholder engagements. Dr. Newkirk recently co-led FDA's infant formula supply chain activities. Prior to this, he was an FDA co-lead in drafting and finalizing National Security Council-led policy to protect and strengthen the resiliency of the U.S. food supply, and he served on the FDA Incident Management Group for COVID. In late 2023, Dr. Newkirk began a second meant at the World Health Organization, Department of Nutrition and Food Safety in Geneva, Switzerland. While well, second, Dr. Newkirk will work within the WHO to strengthen global oversight of food products through advancing regulatory approaches which are aligned with international standards and grounded in a thorough understanding of science and risk principles. Dr. Newkirk recently moved abroad to Switzerland, lucky him, and could not join us tonight. He has provided us, he, did he send us a, a video thing? Awesome. He has provided <laughs> us uh, with his acceptance speech. Good evening to all of the faculty, staff, students, colleagues, and friends in attendance. Please accept my apology for not being able to join you in person as I have recently began a multi-year stint with the World Health Organization here at headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. It is incredibly humbling to accept the Alumni Award of Merit. Previous awardees are contributing to public health in strategic, innovative, and significant ways. It is with sincerest gratitude that I would like to thank the Selection Committee Dr. Allison Burns Spalding, who nominated me in the School of Public Health. While it may be difficult to see myself in the same stature as previous awardees, it has always been my professional goal to contribute to the health of the public and to positively affect as many lives as possible. Is that goal difficult to obtain? Yes. Is it worthy of an entire career? Yes. Did the University of Minnesota provide the education, tools, opportunities, and lifelong friendships so I can achieve that goal? A resounding yes. It would be impossible to thank everyone who played a key role in my time at the U, but I would like to highlight a few. To my cohort, thank you for teaching me, learning with me, and supporting me in difficult times. To Andrea Kish and Drs. Craig Hedberg, Alan Lifson, Randy Singer, Pam Schreiner, and Mike Osterholm, just to name a few, thank you for your brilliant classroom instruction, research guidance, and top-notch assistance in navigating the program. To Sean Kennedy and Drs. Frank Busta and Amy Kircher, thank you for investing so, so much time, funding, and intellectual capital on my experience and education. To Dr. Deb Olson, thank you for the sage advice and direction and the life-changing trip to Uganda. And finally, to Dr. Jeff Bender, thank you for your mentorship, your patience, your kindness, the funding, and for providing strong guidance and the opportunity to find my own way. A good advisor is worth their weight in gold. 
and a great mentor like Jeff is priceless. These are the people who deserve recognitions and awards as they ensure the future of public health. I stand in awe of them and of you all in the room. Your dedication to the health of the public is truly inspiring. And with a heartfelt thank you, I sign off. <laughs> Pretty cool, pretty cool. We will close the evening with the Outstanding Mentor Award. We are very lucky to have been able to award not one, but two incredibly deserving SPH alumni mentors. The Outstanding Mentor Award is conferred upon an individual who has served as a dedicated mentor and has made outstanding contributions to the career and professional development. That's awesome for multiple SPH students through the SPH Mentor Program. Our first recipient of the Outstanding Mentor Award is Donald Buckley. Dr. Buckley has served as a mentor in the SPH Mentoring Program for more than 10 years. He received his undergraduate degree from the University of North Carolina, his master's in hospital administration from the University of Minnesota, and his PhD in health administration from Kennedy Western University in California. In 1972, Donald came to Chesapeake, Virginia to found, develop, and operate the Chesapeake General Hospital, now known as the Chesapeake Regional Medical Center. The Chesapeake Health and Chesapeake Health, which he did for 33 years. Currently, he is assistant professor in the program in public health and the doctorate in health services program at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Since retiring, he has been on faculty of Eastern Virginia Medical School for 16 years. A phase of his career included 12 years volunteering with Physicians for Peace, where he served as chairman of the board. This also afforded him the opportunity to participate in medical missions, viewing developing countries' health administration and the delivery of health care and medical services. Unfortunately, Dr. Buckley could not join us tonight, but he has shared a few remarks that I'm happy to read for us. I sincerely regret not being able to join you this evening, but appreciate the opportunity of making some comments. It is indeed an honor to receive this mentoring award and to continue serving as a mentor in the Health Administration Program with the School of Public Health. Over the years, I have considered the mentoring of students to be part of my continuing education since I learned so much from them during our conversations. Due to distance, most of my contact has been with Zoom, but still most enjoyable. It has been a real pleasure working with Dan Caulfield this year through our Zoom conferences and learning of the activities of the program. I continue to take pride in being a graduate of this program many years ago and seeing the growth and progress of the program in the School of Public Health. Thanks again for this honor. Our second Outstanding Mentor Award recipient is Dr. Allison Byrne Spaulding. Dr. Spaulding has served as a mentor in the SPH Mentoring Program for over 10 years. Dr. Spaulding has worked her entire career in public health research and infectious disease epidemiology. She is currently senior advisor and team lead for a Premise, a new pandemic preparedness program at the National Institute for, of Allergy and Infectious Disease Vaccine Research Center. Prior to her current role, she has worked as a scientific investigator at Children's Minnesota, and before that, was at NIAID with roles as an epidemiologist and presidential management fellow. Real quick, I'd just like to throw in the fact that Allison, Dr. Spaulding has also been a huge mentor for the Presidential Management Fellowship. And for those of you that are unaware of this fellowship, they get 20,000 applicants and they take 20 MPHs across the globe. Dr. Spaulding has an MPH degree from John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and a PhD degree, PhD degree in epidemiology from the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. 
She serves on the SPH Alumni Society Board and leads the mentoring committee for the School of Public Health Alumni Board and lives in Golden Valley with her husband and two children. Dr. Spalding, please join us on stage to accept this award. Oh my gosh, how wonderful that I'm wearing the same jacket as in the photo, just a testament to how little I like to shop, okay? I'm <laughs> busy doing other things, I guess. Um, what, a, what a joy, I mean, really, I am so incredibly thankful there could be, in, in my mind, no better uh, award to get than anything that has to do with mentoring and helping students. Uh, it is such a joy and privilege to be able to do so. Um, and I am literally only where I am in my career because of literally at this point probably a hundred mentors that I've had. Um, and if I were to name them all, we would be here all night. Um, but I really, really am indebted to them, their time, their dedication they gave to me, and I really take that seriously as an obligation that I need to also be doing that and want to be doing that for the next generation, the current generation of public health students. Um, I'm also very excited to have my family with me here tonight. Obviously, I would not be able to do anything that I'm doing right now without them, so I'm excited to have them here. Um, some of my closest friends are also here uh, with me tonight, and so it's just such a joy to be able to celebrate this. I'm thankful to Ashley, one of my former mentors, for nominating me. My current mentee, uh, uh, Maddie, is here as well tonight, so I'm very excited. Um, and just two quick reflections that I wanted to share uh, about mentoring and kind of how I think about it. Uh, and the first one really is that mentoring is a team sport. I've never gone to one mentor for one, you know, all things. You know, I have certain mentors I go to to ask, like, how do I attempt a work-life balance? And those of you I've talked about this before know I don't believe that exists, but to try to get at that concept. Um, I go to other mentors to understand, should I take a job in this place, or should I interview for a job at this place, or should I take this fellowship? And so really, it takes a team of people to, to help us all get to where we want to go to. It, and it's never just one person that can help us get there. And then the second reflection really is that mentoring is a mindset. I consider myself a mentee and a mentor at all times. Um, as others have mentioned, I'm constantly learning from my mentees, uh, and I do hope that I'm able to give them something back and help them along their path. Mine has been very nonlinear career path, um, but it's been pretty enjoyable to date. And again, anything I can do to kind of help that next generation get there, I'm happy to do. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Spaulding. What a remarkable evening. Wow. To hear Dr. Galeo speak and to celebrate our amazing six alumni reward recipients, let's have another round of applause for all these rock stars. <clears throat> On behalf of the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, thank you for joining us for this incredible lecture and celebration. We hope you had a wonderful time. We make sure please drive home safely. Have a great night. We hope to see you next year. Thank you so much.